Hello and welcome to today's video. This time we're taking a look through another couple of boxes of my hardback fiction collection. So sit back, relax, and let's take a look. Okay then, so we're up to S, Julian Stockwin. And I have to say, right off the bat, the majority of today's video is gonna be cleaning up my Julian Stockwin collection. Um, I've got some other bits towards the tail end of the S's and the alphabet at the very end. So it's not all Julian Stockwin, but there's quite a bit here. And um, I'm pretty sure that these are all in uh, the correct uh, published order. And um, this was the proof of his first book. Um, so uh, basically it's the story of Thomas Kidd, who was um, a press ganged person. He was press ganged into the Navy and he was one of three men historically in history, in actual reality, who um, were pressed and made it up as far as Admiral, uh, the rank of Admiral. So uh, this is obviously um, based on one of those stories. And uh, Julian Stockwin himself is local to me, lives literally just up the road. Um, so I've always uh, supported his work. Um, and I've got most of my books, in fact, probably all of it is um, is signed in, in some form or another. Um, I've got some other bits and pieces of memorabilia in the loft, like postcards and things like that. But this is predominantly just the books. So we're starting off with a run of proofs. Then we've got the hardbacks and I've got a few sort of more limited hardbacks as well. Um, unfortunately, um, over the years where these have been stored, uh, some of the books, this one's absolutely fine, but some of the books have ended up getting... Um, uh, some bleached spines and what I'm going to do um, although I'm quite a way behind with my Stockton collection because he does bring out pretty much a book a year um, I am going to make a note when I edit this video of the books that I've got that I've got sun spines but the books themselves are okay and I'll try and pick up uh, replacement copies um, of the books with just nice dust wrappers because as I said a lot of my books are actually signed the good news is with Julian Stockwin he's not an expensive author to collect so um, you know I should be able to pick up anything that's a bit damaged without too much trouble unlike something like this which is uh, one of his proofs and as you can see um, highly susceptible to sunning this particular one. I think the hard back of this has also been sunned as well, which is a bit of a shame. Uh, nothing I can really do about it. I said these are, um, in almost all cases, are um, signed copies. Now, not all the, the stock wins were proofed. They didn't all get proofs, and I don't know if they're still being proofed at all. But he did definitely receive, certainly in this neck of the country, um, some success with this series. Um, I'd say, Stockwins was, um, he, he sort of falls in the middle for me between um, C.S. Forrester, who I love, and also Patrick O'Brien. He's somewhere in between. I've never really tried old uh, Douglas Riemann, so I can't comment on those. But um, the Stockwins, I think, are a fantastic read. I've, all the ones I've read, I've absolutely enjoyed. I've got to admit, I haven't read one in a few years, and uh, I am frustrated by that, because there's a lot of other series I've managed to keep going. But this particular series, I've... Uh, sort of fallen out of a little bit but there we go so i said some of them have got you know, little bits of a storage where all they've got um the spines have been uh, faded but there's not like this there's not a massive amount i can do about that it's unlikely i'll be able to pick up the proofs again that easily um they're just um generally the stockman proofs are quite hard to find i think certainly the later you go the harder to find they are but i'm not overly worried um it's nice to support a local author and a local author who's had um, some real success as well. Uh, tenacious. Some of them have got like signed postcards and things like that inside. And when he had a new book, he would generally do signings in the local bookshops. And a uh, very nice chap he is too. I've got a few photos which I'll pop in now of uh, Julian. I'm, Pretty sure he's still around. I've not heard that he's passed away. So, uh, and as he lived just up there, just literally up the up the road from me. So I've met him several times. Certainly when I was a bookseller as well, I've met him often. Kid, I actually got so many proofs. I didn't realise I had quite. Quite as many as this. This one's an unsigned one, by the look of it. Uh, so it's signed there, but the postcard isn't. So. 
I would usually have, because I found, I didn't have them all as they were coming out, but I did, didn't did find it very difficult to find the early books in their various hardback first editions. And they do make a really handsome set when you've got them on the, uh, on the shelf. This has got a little, um, oh, a compliment. So that's probably from the author themselves, their copy of Treachery there. I know certainly, uh, I think it's Kathy is his wife's name. She uh, helps out, I think, with the website a little bit. And when collectors want particular editions and stuff, they're really uh, good for that. As I said, later on, they did start producing like limited ones of their own, which are really nice as well. So it's another little thing. Oh, that's, congratulations on winning this advanced copy of Conquest. There we are. There we are. So that was one that I won. I do remember winning, entering a, a Stockland competition and winning a little bag of goodies from him, which was really nice. So, um, which I've still got. It's like a Hessian, a Hessian bag, um, with, uh, some Stockland related memorabilia in. There we are. This is the, the latest of the run that I had in proof form. And there's pretty much all, apart from a couple with faded spines, they're not too bad. Um, there's just a couple there which are, um, you know, got a little bit of foxing, a little bit of storage wear on the top. And unfortunately, there's not a lot I can do about that. But I'm, I'm fairly happy with all of those. Um, even the ones with the, the faded spines, they are what they are. Um, you know, it is what it is, as they say. Um, now here's the regular edition of the first book, which is Kid, and these are the proper trade hardbacks. I haven't got any in paperback. I did have a, a couple which are reading copies, but I've got rid of all of those now. I've just got these uh, really nice hardbacks. I mean, Hodder and Stout, it's not a small publisher by any means. And um, I would always have various bits and pieces, places where I've met him. Um, for, I think he did promo postcards for all his books, you know. Um, but this one's absolutely fine, um, but they're certainly, I'm afraid to say, not all like that. But something like this in first print, even a signed one, wouldn't set you back too much money. Perhaps uh, sort of possibly £15, something like 15 to 20 I don't think he's that sort of a collectible, that much of a collectible author. Although he is fun to collect, if that makes sense. So I think to give these a proper dust, I'm going to have to take the wrappers off. Give them a proper wipe. That I did actually. A bit of dusty going down the top of the uh, top of the spine there. I'm trying to get these in picture as much as possible as well. But I mean, I'm not a massive collector of modern first editions, which these would sort of fall under, you know. Um, but. You know, if it's an author I really like, in all honesty, I, I don't think there's any authors that are being published contemporary that I actually collect at all. I just, I just don't, you know. Um, here's the uh, second one. Once again, it's got a faded spine. So I'm going to make a note of this because it's clearly, you can sort of see it should be much more dark like that and it's faded. So it's not massive, but it is, I do need a better dust wrapper on this one. And as I said, the actual books themselves are fairly easy to get. Um, obviously, the, the signed postcard and the signed first, not so much. But the actual dust wrapper, I'll be able to find that without too much trouble. You know, pick up a, a copy unsigned and just swap the dust wrappers around so I get a nice one again. So I'm going to be doing that with a few of these. So this is definitely one which I'll put on my upgrade list, Artemis. New dust wrapper required. I, I've seen lots of uh, the Stockwin books where someone's clearing them out, where it's five or six books for like a tenner. Not often, I'm not saying I see them all the time, but I have seen lots like that. And um, that would be just the sort of thing I'd be able to do to uh, to grab a few in one hit. I've just changed the camera angle a little bit, so hopefully you can get... These are quite, quite large hardback books, you know. Now, this is the worst of all the faded spines. Look at that. It really is quite, quite awful, that one. So Sea Flower... And unfortunately, this is one of the ones that I think is one of the tougher early ones to get. But, of course, I do only need to find one with a nice wrapper. The book itself, in this particular case, is actually absolutely fine. Uh, it's a first with the signature in. And I've got the accompanying postcard. So 
Once again, I'll make a little note of these and um, hopefully I should be able to fill in a few gaps as we go along. Now, when we've brushed all of these and checked them internally, um, next step will be to, um, I'm gonna give the dust wrappers a polish, all right? So it's not gonna be a very long video this time around. Um, last week, of course, we had, um, there it is, where we were bagging paper bags uh, and we were bagging those first well, we bagged penguin paperbacks 51 to 100, and on my main channel I did books 1 to 50, and um, the feedback I've had from my patron and channel supports is a really enjoyable video. So I've decided to bag up my collection of Collins Crime next time round. So I'm probably, once again, because I haven't covered those on the main channel for ages, I'll probably do that on, on that one. So here's the next one, Mutiny. And... Um, take it out the wrapper again once again sadly you can clearly see look at that the wrapper that blue should be much darker sort of purple and it's just faded away and it looks awful um i really nowadays all my hard backs are kept in a room which doesn't catch any sun at all um and obviously my very rare rarest hardback are protected and in a, in a darkened room um so because sun is the the killer of course but these sadly um i've been out on the shelf i didn't really think much of it at the time and um sadly you know with the kids growing up and that unfortunately i took my eye off the ball and these are uh, these did get a bit um faded so it is what it is it can't be helped can it there we are now, speaking of naval action, it's actually come at quite a good time because I'm in the middle of watching a series called Black Sails. Now, I'm not sure if you ever heard of this one. It's I'm right. It's four seasons, and I'm in the middle of season three at the moment. Um, very, very good indeed. It's on the Stars Network, so I'm not sure where you might receive Stars shows, but I believe it's from the same company that made the spartacus tv show that sort of company so um there you go it's a quarter deck another one faded spine so uh, a better one required of this one and um yeah that's also um black sails is, is basically referring to the uh, the pirate skull and crossbones you know so um yeah i've been really really enjoying that so uh if you get a chance to watch black sails i recommend it Excellent so far. Quite adult. You wouldn't want to have it on with the kids around. Yeah, look at that. That's actually got some. I'm not sure what that is along the edge there. It's like got some wear for quarter day. Yeah, I don't think it's a uh, mold per se. I'd be very, very surprised if it was. But I'm not sure what it is on the edges there. There's a touch of it there, and we have got some later on that definitely, unfortunately, foxed, you know. And it works its way into the pages. But I'm reluctant to get rid of it because it is a it's a signed one. Well, they're all they're all signed, you know. Um pretty much, as I said, because of his local vicinity to me. Uh, it's been very, very easy to get these signed up. I must check to see he's actually still publishing these at uh, one a year. Now this one here, which is the next one, Tenacious, I've actually got two copies of, and both of them are sun-spined. Both of them, because it's that really deep. I um, mean, I think one of them is the regular trade edition, and one of them is uh, like the limited one that the Stockwins themselves put out. So I think this is the regular trade one, first of all, I think, but I'm not sure. Enjoyed bagging those books uh, last last week. It's fantastic. It took ages, absolutely ages. I've now got some wider bags which are designed for digests, but they give me that extra bit of width, so I won't need to put hopefully so many in comic bags. 
but I think I'm still going to need to put a few in, unfortunately. Now, this is the other edition of Tenacious, and is this a limited? Yeah. See, look at that. This is, it's got a much more of a, it's numbered for starters. So it's numbered 315, and it's got an embossed, the Stockwind's embossed sort of a, what do they call it? Like they're monochrome. Signed and dated, flat signed and dated. The Continuing Adventures of Thomas Kidd. Look at that across the top. That's really nice, isn't it? I think this was the first one. Yeah, oh, of a thousand, three, three, five of one thousand. And I believe that the uh, Stockwinds themselves produced these. Uh, they, they, they bought like a thousand off the publisher and did their own limited editions. And um, I said he's very, got very, or had, I'm, I'm assuming it's all still there, a very popular website. And uh, a loyal fan base. So, uh, yeah, that's going to be absolutely fine. As I said, like a, a lot of these, it's just going to need a new dust wrapper. But a couple of them, there's one coming up in a minute, which has been badly stained along the top. And I don't know what's happened to it. I don't know how it happened, but I'm hoping most of it will clean off. Um, and I'm hoping it's not the uh, the limited one. <laughs> Rather, I'm um, hoping it's just the trade hardback, but uh, we shall see in a moment. It's quite good. I'm not sure if they actually came protected dress wrappers like that or not, but as I said, you need to get a new dress wrapper on that one. Right, so once again, two copies of Command. And this is the one with the bad staining on. And I suspect this is the limited one. Yeah, what a shame. It's the limited, limited one. Oh. Yeah, it's good. It must be there. It's got a bookmark in it as well. I think the other one's got a bookmark. So, for starters, the dust wrapper's faded on the spine. 552 of a thousand. Well, let's just see if there's anything we can do about that to get that looking a little bit better. Unfortunately, although this is 2006, it's probably the, I think, this is probably the first time it's been looked at since then. And that's my fault. But it's also one of the reasons why I'm doing this is because I want to get on top of my collection and get it looking as nice as possible, which I think you could safely say we've definitely done over the last couple of years, definitely. But at the same time, there's gonna be stuff like this turning up it does look like it's some sort of mold on that which is not great well we'll keep an eye on it uh, i don't think it's, it's going to get any worse not certainly not where the books are stored at the moment it's going to be absolutely fine but that is i'm afraid to say not great to see that and it's definitely um come under fire but at the same time you know it, this is a really easy hardback to get it sold actually really well certainly locally it sold well so i'm pretty sure i'll be able to pick up uh, replacement dust wrappers to tidy these copies up here's the regular trade edition i remember selling this one at the time see that wrapper is not too bad we may have got over the worst of it i don't know i know there may be actually one more to come is a trade paperback like an export copy which looks like it's faded i think then we're in the clear <sighs> a lot of dust coming off this one <sighs> so with the books that we've got today we pretty much go up to the end of my modern fiction books we've done all the vintage hardback fiction and we've now done all the uh, sort of modern fiction stuff that was just bought and put on the shelf once it was read um, and then we're going to be moving on to the next bit when we do do some hardbacks next it's going to be the autobiographies and biography sort of titles and when I had a look at them <laughs> a lot of them are signed because I was just around at the time to get them signed um, actually, that dust wrapper doesn't look too badly. When it's on the spine, it looks fine, but it's only when you get the book out that you do see it is slightly spined. Uh, sun spined. But yeah, a lot of my autobiographies are um, 
are, are signed ones from various celebrities or people I did events with, you know, over the years. Um, so there's the next two, but I'm going to just reset the camera again. Okay, okay then, so two copies of Kid the Admiral's Daughter. And uh, oh, this got loads in, hasn't it? So this must be the limited one, I'm guessing. So Admiral's Daughter. Then a, a generic look at the series. Another bookmark. What's this? We hope you enjoy the collector set of Kid. This was issued in 2008. 313 of 500 this time, so not quite so many. I seem to remember you could get these direct from the Stockwins. Obviously, you could go to the website and order them that way. And um, I think the limited ones were um, about 20 or 25 pounds, including the postage. But it was nice because you did used to get lots of little extras that we've just seen there, you know. But you know, again, it's got a little bit of. Um, well, it's like. It is like where. I've got to say, it's a bit like a bit of mold creeping in somehow but no nothing too serious but it's a little bit I said it's just a reflection of where these were stored historically for a while they weren't in a not particularly nice environment but it's all it's all I had at the time so but not nowadays they're in a nice uh, very dry environment with no sun at all and uh, they're absolutely fine but unfortunately, as you've seen with some of the earlier books, the damage was sadly already done. But there you go. But I mean, so many, so many bits to this one. I can hardly fit them all in. Look at that. There we are. Very nice. What a, what a package. And then this, I'm guessing, is just the regular edition of um, the Admiral's Daughter, not the, uh, not the. Uh, one direct from the author. So, yeah, it's got a little bit of marking on. Yeah, hints, hints of a bit of storage wear. And I think it was around this time that the series really started to take off in the mainstream and you could go on holiday and I can remember seeing them on the ferry and things like this. They, they certainly were much more widely available and then i don't know but i think that i think the series sort of um maybe lost a, a bit of steam as it were um i don't know for sure it was around the time i sort of left the book business so i can't i didn't keep a track of the sales but when i was a book buyer i would always make sure that stockholm was in all the bookshops that i supplied you know but there we are that one's absolutely fine Right now, this next one is treachery, and this isn't a proof. It's like it's the trade paperback, but it's a stained trade paperback. But I believe it was the first. It was yeah. I suspect that treachery came out in trade paperback and hardback, which I've got pretty much at the same time. And uh, unfortunately, this one is massively spine faded and I've got the hardback as well there so I'm not really too fussed because um, it's the hardback first I've got for some reason I've got this trade paperback as well and it's actually got quite foxed along the top as well so uh, not sure what's going on there but not to worry not to worry we'll give it a, another clean in a minute and this was the regular now is this the regular one or the limited one ah, this is the limited one Interesting. Okay, so this was 243 of 500 with the postcard and another bookmark. Oh, blue boards for a change rather than the black. Once again, this would have been bought directly from the Stockwins themselves. A little bit of foxing along the top edge, but not too bad. I suppose the only way to really avoid that is to put your books in bags, your hardbacks in bags, and I'm very, very reluctant to do that. <sighs> but I know long term, if the books are going to be in a, you know, not in the greatest environment, then that, that is the only real way to stop them picking up the mould. I just didn't really think of this at the time. I just put them on the shelf and that was that. I never envisaged for a moment that I'd be revisiting them years later. Right, so all the rest of the books, I've only got one of each. I've got five more in the Stockwin series to look at and whether these are just 
regular editions or limited i don't know well this is a limited one again brown bookmark in keeping with the uh cover and that the jacket They've caught a little bit of dust, you know, these ones. But that's okay. On the whole, they're not too bad at all. Yeah, yeah hardback and trade paperback. I think at this point in time, when was this one published? 2009. I think at this point, the books might have been coming out simultaneously in hardback and trade paperback. Um, the book business was quite funny back then, and um, this was around the time I pretty much left the book business and went on to do something a bit different. Um, but I still kept in contact with the Stockwinds and um, would generally um, go to events and, and get stuff signed by them. This one says signed by the author in Watson, so I'm imagining, yeah, this is just the regular trade edition. It's not a limited one that was produced by them. You may not be able to see it, but it's just got a little on the top edge. It's almost like a layer of dust has seeped in over the uh, the last sort of 14 years since this was put was brand new and, and put on the shelf. And uh, I suppose in that time, books do get a little dusty, but we can handle it. We have the technology. Betrayal. Who will steal the greatest prize of empire? We've got some cards here. Conquest and betrayal. These are not signs, so maybe my my later ones. I need to catch up with him at a later, uh, a more recent signing and get these done. I don't know. That one's signed inside. So the title page is signed. <sighs> well, we've certainly managed to create a nice load of dust here in the studio. So that one really should go in Conquest, shouldn't it? It's not actually in the right book here. So it should go in there. You've got to keep the book straight, as they say. Now, I've got a little pile here still. But I'm running rapidly, running out of room. So I want to keep them in order, though. So the next one is Victory, Kid, Nelson and Trafalgar. Well, covering all the bases there. Twelve ninety nine for a hardback. It's a pretty good value, isn't it? That? That's just a generic one. Um, and there's the new one, which I have got over there. So I don't know whether this should be in Carry B, but uh, look through Victory first. It's signed again, which is cool. Give these all a little a little polish off in a minute. That goes like that. And here is Caribbee. And let's see. And that's signed as well, but no postcard. So I'm going to put that postcard in this one. Because I think that's the latest book that's actually on it. So not quite as many 
bad ones as I thought, because I thought this was going to be a bit of a car crash with regards to the condition of these, but, you know, it's not the end of the world, is it? Not the end of the world. Right, now, there's, there is just one other Stockwin, which was a non-fiction that he wrote, and I'm not sure if this is still in print, but Stockwin's Maritime Miscellany, and uh, a ditty bag of wonders from the golden age of sail. And this one also had a postcard, and this one looks like it's a... Oh, look, look at that, 165 of 250. So this is one with the Stockwinds stamp on. That's quite nice, isn't it? And the accompanying postcard. research that Stockwin does for the series he'd amassed loads of uh, loads of knowledge so uh, I guess that's why he did that which was quite nice right now we're on to some non Julian Stockwin books I got um, a book on the survivors and some on the Sweeney and a couple other fiction books so the Survivors, what a great book, uh, what a great series that was. This one's published by Telos. Absolutely fantastic book on the series. Um, really, really good. And I do love The Survivors. It did get a revival on the BBC, which wasn't as good. But I certainly uh, love the original series. It's fantastic. Now, this is one of the Sweeney books. Re look at that cover. Regan and the Deal of the Century. Um... This, they released a few Sweeney books in hardback. I don't know how many. Um, I really don't. But a few did get published in hardback. I don't know if this is X Library or not. It's not X Library, but it's also missing the... Uh, Ah, and published by the book club, so maybe it was book club only. Don't know, but I've got the full set in paperback of Sweeney books. Don't know how many ever got published in in hardback like this. Um, they're scarce, from the best of my knowledge. I don't think you find these very easily. But we do love the Sweeney son, and rather like the Sweeney, I haven't had my dinner, but it's okay. For you, I make an exception, loyal viewers. Now, thinking about it, I'm just trying to think what's actually due next week. You know, I just can't remember. I don't know if we're due the next pelican cleaning video. Penguin was last week, wasn't it? No, Pan was last. Penguin was last week, Pan the week before, or the other way around. We've done hardbacks. Don't know. Maybe something else, something that we've not, not cleaned yet. Or it may be the next bagging video. We shall see. We shall see. Right, shut it. Shut it, as they said on the Sweeney. A great series this was. Just loved it. Sadly, we lost uh, Dennis Waterman last year, didn't we? I loved him in Minder, and I loved him in the Sweeney. Great stuff. This is really tough to find. This was a hard book to find, even at the time when it was published. It just wasn't really distributed very well, I think. I don't know why. Um, quite, quite niche, I suppose. Aram books, I mean, they are, well, they, I don't know if they're still around, but they were a reasonable size publisher. It's a nice book. Got a few on the Sweeney. This is the last, and this is another great one, actually, an official companion to the screen. This is uh, R&H, a Fremantle uh, R&H books, guidebook to the series. Some of the, uh... oh, there we are, look, I've just seen that one there. I've got all the annuals. I haven't got the sheet music, that's new. I haven't, I don't know, I haven't got the rub down transfers. I've got the single. Yeah, I've got some, quite a bit related to the Sweeney 2 movie. I've got the poster and I've got the script, an original shooting script. 
I've got signed photos of all the cast, all the main cast anyway, which is really nice. 2002 this one, Reynolds and Hearn. Um, yeah, the, the other one was, uh, if you remember, their boss, because they were both policemen, was um, Haskins, they called him. And he was played by an actor called Garfield Morgan. I think he was really he's so underrated, that guy. Now, this one's an absolutely gorgeous book. This, I believe, was published for the 40th anniversary of Virago Modern Classics, I think. Um, I absolutely love Virago Modern Classics. I, I daren't collect them. Um, yeah, 2018. Um, does it say it was for the first 40 years? I can't remember. Um, yeah, I love Virago as a publisher, and they got some fantastic. They really were the voice for women's fiction, and they brought back a lot of women's fiction that had been lost. <sighs> and those distinctive green B format Virago modern classics are absolutely gorgeous, and I've got a few on the authors that I like. Um, I particularly like the author Elizabeth Taylor, not the actress, the author Elizabeth Taylor. She was fantastic. I really liked uh, hers. And the last one today, Bernard Werber, Empire of the Ants. I remember really enjoying this one at the time, but can't tell you anything about it now. I'm just saying. <laughs> but this was a proof that I got. 1996, blimey. Yeah, I remember it being good, but... don't know now. I think the packaging was harking back to something like um, uh, the Wasp Factory. Anyway, that's all the books brushed and internally looking good. Now we've got to go through and uh, give them all a gentle polish, some a bit more than others. Okay then, let's give these uh, books the uh, polish. Now I've got a full thing of Mr. Sheen there, but I've also got this one which is uh, got a little bit left in it, so we'll uh, spread on quite generously on the first couple. As I said, these don't need too much, I don't think. Um, so maybe some of those later ones might benefit a bit more, but you know, on the whole these shouldn't be too bad, but until you actually start, it's quite hard to tell. Uh, how they're going to fare. So even this has got more off than I might have thought. Interestingly, we don't have to go crazy. So yeah, so if you've not already, I hope you've uh, enjoyed last week's bagging video. It's definitely worth a look. I just like it as an excuse to get some of the old books out again. And um, that's their sort of final resting place, as it were. We've already been through and cleaned them and repaired those those books as best we possibly can. Really, the last step is actually to get them bagged away. Um, but I'm not saying I'm going to be doing one of them every week because the bags are expensive. You know, they're, I've found them slightly cheaper if you buy them on Amazon in bulk. So if you buy a couple of hundred at a time, they work out a little bit cheaper, about 11p a bag. Um, but with the amount of books that I've got, that's still an awful lot of money. So it's going to be a project, <laughs> but I do intend getting a few thousand done this year with a bit of luck. So uh, I will definitely use the opportunity to um, film the process as well, just as uh, just for my own benefit, really, you know. But also, you know, I know people love to watch those sorts of videos, so it's all good. See, something like this, which was brand new anyway, and it's, it is unread. I don't need to just gently put the cloth over it. There's nothing too much to take off here. Just the odd fingerprint and stuff, which is absolutely fine. Proofs are definitely a funny beast. I'm not a massive fan of them anymore. But I used to love collecting them at one point, but I had so many. And in fact, I gave about 100 to a charity shop. I, I just can't be bothered with them, you know. But, you know, some are obviously quite collectible ones by collectible authors. And I remember I had the uh, proof of Game of Thrones, for example. That was an expensive book, <laughs> as you can imagine. I, uh, I sold it before the TV show came out. 
and I had Game of Thrones in proof, plus the first book in hardback first, and the second and third in British hardback first, and I had a sample paperback of the first book, the first like few chapters, plus an earlier George R. R. Martin, which was called Sand Kings, which became an episode of The Twilight Zone, which was signed. So I put all that lot up in a in a lot, and I was absolutely amazed when it went for just over six hundred quid. And this is before um, so the TV series of Game of Thrones have been released. The proof alone now goes for about 2000 and that's in, you know, tatty red condition. Mine was absolutely mint and unread. So uh, there you go. If only we'd known, eh? Um, but there you go. <laughs> hindsight, eh? Hindsight. Right, that appears to be all the, uh, the proofs. Now we've got a couple of the more regular editions. Now this is actually already protected, but I'm going to give the plastic protection um, a bit of a blast as well. Not going to hurt. Lovely. Here we are. Well, I thought rather than add some stuff in while I'm editing this video. I'm going to pause after this part. I'm just going to quickly look him up and make sure A, he's still alive, and B, the books have still been being published because I imagine that must be, well, maybe 30 in the range. They could easily be that now. Um, I don't know. So I think I'm just going to pause after this book to do a little bit of research and I'll be able to tell you all about it in just a sec. Okay, so good news. Um, Julian is still around. He is 80. And the series of kid books stopped at number 26. So there's 26 in all to collect. And uh, how many have I actually got then? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So I haven't got the last 12. I'm not sure how easy they would be to pick up if I was to consider finishing the set. It sort of seems a shame since I've got so many already, but uh, you know how it is. Now, this particular one hasn't got the shiny surface that the other one has, so I'm just gently putting the cloth over that one. This one's in a protected sleeve. Yeah, 26 books. Eh? So that looks like that was the, in, in the end, that was the final target. And that's what it ended up doing. Yeah, looks like my can of Mr. Sheen is uh, on its last legs. Wow. 
so yeah so looking ahead to next week i am not 100 percent sure what we're going to end up doing but keep an eye on the other channel if you've not already because i am going to be doing some of the bagging videos over there as well possibly one a month i don't know possibly and i'm going to definitely revisit the uh, collins crime club titles next that's going to be the next bagging project well collins crime predominantly but they did do some other stuff as well and i've got some lovely foreign editions of those so uh yeah keep an eye over there got quite a bit lined up over the next few weeks including a toy fair and some stuff some marvel stuff i'm filming with a friend this week as well marvel fan club videos it's all cool loads going on and uh, of course i am heading to the uh, london paperback show which is in march the 24th in london um and bloomsbury the bloomsbury holiday inn recommend that one it's going to be a fantastic show so if you can get along to that i will be there okay last uh, last pile and i think that um other porsche has just about had it now so uh, we should move on to this I noticed uh, Julian was now an MBE, a member of the British Empire. That's very good. And so he's not just an author, he's a real historian. And you've got to be writing something like this, haven't you? You've got to really know your subject. And uh, a lot of people do compliment the books on their sort of gritty, like realism. It is almost like being there. And that's, uh, that's super cool. That one's got a sort of a buff buff finish. So there's not a lot I can do there. Take that. This one shouldn't be too bad. I remember really enjoying this when it came out. So no idea if it's still in print from Telos, but uh, you may be able to find one on the secondary market. I suspect it's long gone because um, these things generally have quite a short shelf life to begin with anyway. Um, and I doubt you'll get one easily, but if you are into the series, it's a great, great book. Yeah, I wonder if this was the only one that was put into hardback. I seem to remember seeing vaguely the Sweeney 2 in a hardback form, but I may be wrong. Pretty sure I did once, you know. If anyone knows, put me, do put me right. Yeah, I remember being delighted to finally get one of these. It was a toy fair. Couldn't believe it. It had only just been published, but I was just really surprised to find it at that sort of a show, you know. Have to get it because that's also a, a tough one. Anyway, I hope I haven't bored you too much with Julian Stockwin this week. It's uh, you know, not everyone's cup of tea, I understand that, but yeah, you never tried him. Very, very easy to pick up the first few books in paperback off uh, places like eBay for like a pound or two. And uh, you may well really, really enjoy them if you like uh, naval fiction, which I do. Oh, so, some of it at least. Anyway, yeah, thank you for watching today. Hope you've enjoyed it. And uh, if you've not already, do please hit that subscribe button. It does definitely make a difference. Leave a comment if you have enjoyed it. And uh, I shall be back next week with another video. Bye.